How's it going y'all? This is McFrosty Boy. You've probably seen a YouTube video where the player points out the advantages or disadvantages in a given situation. This type of analysis is definitely useful, but some of you may walk away thinking, okay, but how do I tell when something is an advantage? The good news is that this video definitely answers that question. The bad news is that I'm going to sell my soul and ask you to like, comment, and subscribe, and also upload on Reddit to help get the word out. To be fair, I genuinely think that my content is helpful for players instead of a mindless compilation of highlight clips by yet another mediocre player that's banked enough playtime to have some cool plays to pull out of their VODs that are otherwise filled with low quality play. So help a friend out, yeah? So the single biggest factor that helps you tell if something is an advantage or a disadvantage is if it makes shots on you or your enemies easier or harder. This fight starts with the classic let's go third party frosty squad on the low ground play. Never gets old, always love it. What the team here, team here. Right? We actually get a slightly early tip off from Lifty who tells us that he thinks he hears a third party, but he's not sure where. Is there? I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna start climbing up to the towards the replicator to find out. I immediately stop looting and begin scouting the high ground. In the worst case scenario, the enemy is actually attacking us from the high ground, but since I'm Wraith, I can use my face to scout and void walk away if necessary. The best case scenario is if the enemy is coming at us from a different angle, in which case we have the high ground. Hopefully, it's already clear why high ground makes it harder for enemies to hit shots on you and is therefore a huge advantage. The major disadvantages in this situation are that we're either looting or healing, which makes us much easier to hit, and, with the exception of yours truly, our squad is positioned on the low ground, which also makes this much easier to hit. Also, because our squad is spread out, it's tougher for me to provide covering fire, which is just a different way of saying it makes it harder for me to hit the bad guys. We see one reason why high ground is an advantage when it covers a revive from the enemy because it A, makes it impossible for them to hit us, and B, forces them to run uphill to be able to hit us again, which takes longer than running across even terrain or going downhill. We see the high ground come in again as an advantage with how it forces the enemy to take really predictable and exposed lines of approach in order to be able to hit us again. I down one, nice. I down one. Right, lifeline rising. Finally, all that's left is for me to let lifeline revive the enemies so that I can steal the kills from my teammates. Joking aside, I actually get bailed out for having some questionable aim and for not keeping track of how many shots were left in the Mastiff thanks to the fact that the death box and my teammate make it practically impossible for the enemy to have a chance to hit me until I'm ready. For those of you that have the tendency to zone out when there's gameplay footage, here's a blurry screen along with a written summary of what you should have learned from this example, which is that the biggest factor in evaluating an advantage or disadvantage is if it will make it easier or harder for you or the enemy to hit shots. Our second example is going to walk you through the same concept, but with a few advantages that are less intuitive and in a situation where overall we have the advantages for once. At the beginning of this fight, I register three shots with a scout on Wraith with white armor. Make sure to remember this, it will be important later. I drop down off the height to start preparing to push the enemy from the ground floor. Instead, we see that the enemy Caustic has decided to push, a decision that winds up being a huge disadvantage. Remember the Wraith? The three shots with the scout on her white armor total 118 damage, which leaves her with 42 remaining HP. The fastest thing she could do is find a shield swap. Even if she found purple, she would still only have 142 HP, which is less HP than she had before I took those shots. Her other options involve healing, which are going to be slow and make her late to this push. So in a slightly roundabout way, that early damage makes it so that either the Wraith stays back and cannot hit any shots, or she joins the push with practically no HP, making her easy to target first and knock, which is going to make it hard for her to hit any shots. You never know though, Respawn may reintroduce the buy where you can shoot after getting knocked. After knocking the Caustic, I begin to heal, and the enemies struggle with timing issues since pushing is generally a slight disadvantage since it requires that the whole team moves forward in order to be able to hit shots again. The fact that the Bloodhound shows up at all at this point is another disadvantage, since the Caustic is already knocked and overall the enemy squad has one less person to help them hit shots. Also, my teammates are grouped together on the ground floor, meaning that it's easier for them to hit shots if they decide to help me with the Bloodhound. Afterwards, the Wraith donates her body to the Frosty Struggle Climbing Through Plat Fund. Not all heroes wear capes. So we covered in this segment a few situations that show you that your gut is indeed correct in assessing that actually taking damage or worse, getting knocked, is a disadvantage, since either of these things make it much harder to hit shots later. The other big factor that makes something an advantage or disadvantage is how it affects the number of choices you have. In general, the more choices you have, the easier it will be for you to find a solution that will make it easier to hit shots and or harder for the enemy to hit shots. In this example, our squad is facing a situation where we've got a very limited set of choices. The enemy squad has range and has been chasing us across Sorting Factory. They keep registering solid poke damage, so the threat of them pushing to follow up is always present. Because the zipline is the fastest way to close distance with our squad, we have to cover it, and it takes all three of us because they keep abusing us at range, forcing us to heal and trade the responsibility of covering the zipline. Additionally, 
Missing HP makes us really reluctant to move out of cover to a different position. In other words, this enemy squad has established a huge advantage in that leaving this zipline unattended gives them an easy and fast line of attack. They can continue to abuse their range and eliminate a lot of choices for our squad while continuing to keep us at their optimal range. The enemy then proceeds to throw this fight by actually taking the zipline option we've invested so much in covering, allowing our squad to register major damage on both the horizon and the wraith. This leaves both enemies at low HP and gives them very little opportunity to hit shots, and the particulars of this part of the map make it hard for them to disengage, reducing their choices and thereby their ability to adjust and make it harder for us to hit our shots. The HP advantage is so huge that I actually get to jump down onto low ground and then miss a bunch of shots on the horizon, both things that should make me easier to hit, and yet I still come out on top. The takeaway here is that the number of choices you have is also a major factor in determining if something is an advantage or not, since more choices generally give you more ways to make it easier for you to hit your shots and harder for the enemy to hit their shots. Our last example is going to focus on the number of choices again, but this time our control of the choices are clearer. Particularly, we'll see how grenades are really effective in controlling enemy choices, making them very important in creating advantages for your squad or taking them away from the enemy. At the start of this fight, the enemy caustic pushes the meta by solo pushing far ahead of his squad across open ground, making it easy for our squad to collectively team up on him. Because that particular approach angle cuts across open ground, the enemy squad overall doesn't have as many reasonable choices when it comes to regrouping. The caustic can't really run away, and his teammates aren't sure if they can run to him safely. Who's on the zipline behind? There are people on the zipline behind us. Yeah, there's a lot behind us. Oh. We hear movement in the multi-story building behind us, and I hard commit into dealing with the caustic, thinking that we're about to get sandwiched between two squads. Or at least I try to. I don't think hitting two 11s with the massive counts is dealing with anyone. When Lifeline comes up to revive the caustic, the particular placement of the arc star I throw creates a huge advantage, since it takes away a number of meaningful choices from her. Basically, Lifeline is going to be forced to step away from the right side of her shield and choose between stepping forward into my line of fire or to step to the left. I can then reposition on the left of the cover and place her and the caustic between me and the third party we think is coming from the right. What winds up happening instead is I stick her with the arc star, which kind of makes me sad because I feel like it invalidates all that big brain mental work I did when I threw the grenade in the first place. Quite conveniently, the grenade also re-knocks the caustic, totally calculated. As I reposition to deal with the remaining enemies, I could have void walked away, but doing so means that I no longer have the choice to back up my teammates, meaning that there is some element of disadvantage tied to using the void walk right now. Instead, I take shots with our mastiff, which breaks the enemy wreath. Even if this is a full squad of three, knowing that the enemy has a mastiff and getting hit by it takes away the option of W keying on the approach, since I'll likely pre-aim obvious angles of approach. The enemy wraith actually does the right thing in finding a solid piece of cover to work with, as well as finding a slightly less obvious line of approach that creates range between us. Unfortunately, the fact that I showed her earlier that I have a mastiff along with her lack of knowledge of my actual HP total together create an advantage, since it leads her to believe that continuing to fight me was no longer a viable choice, which is almost as good as actually taking the choice away. So to summarize my answer to the original question, how do I tell if something is an advantage or disadvantage, you should consider two factors. First, check to see if it will make it easier or harder for you or the enemy to hit shots. If it's still not clear, check to see how it will affect the number of viable decisions available to each squad. These are two quick checks you can run at any time within the game, and I strongly encourage you to do so when you've got the time to think, both in and out of the game. Okay, now you've got everything you need to start figuring out for yourself what is and isn't going to help you out in a fight. I want to help you all improve at Apex Legends, and I need your help to get this content to the rest of the community. So like, comment, subscribe, hop in the stream, join our Discord, and remember, the secret ingredient is hard work. Good luck, have fun, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Oh, oh my god.